I'd like to introduce some basic plastering tools. Plastering is broken down into traditional plastering, uh, dry lining, floor screening and fibrous plastering. So first of all I'll do the basic plastering tools, essential for every plasterer. Two basic trowels here. This is an 11 inch stainless steel trowel uh, made by Tyzak, but there's other trowels you can buy, made by Ragney and Marshall Town. Uh, all similar quality, just varying cost. This is a, a larger trowel, 13 or 14 inch trowel, again made of stainless steel, uh, hard wearing. This is what we call a ready to go trowel. The edges have been chamfered off. Uh, because when you're plastering with a new trowel, it tends to leave score marks in the corners. So if you look at those two trowels there, you'll notice one's got chamfered corners and the other one hasn't. So this one needs to be broken in and this one is ready to go as it says there. Two more tools, essential for every plasterer. This is a bucket trowel, used for scraping out materials out of buckets. And this is called a, a gauging trowel or years ago called a bull nose trowel. This is for working into small areas, behind pipes, so on and so forth. Again, Spear and Jackson, Marshall Town or Ragney, plus various other makes. This is a variety of corner trowels used when you do skimming. Uh, it allows you to work two, two edges together. This one's made by Tyzak. This one's made by, by Ragney. And as it happens, the third one is made by Ragnar. But again, made of stainless steel, flexible wings, so it doesn't cut into the corners when you run down the corner of the wall. So this is what we call a, a drywall hammer. Many years ago to be called a lath hammer for chopping laths and cutting them. But modern day equivalent, we call it a drywall hammer. So that's principally used for, for dry lining activities. This is a claw hammer, this is used for pulling out nails out of joists when you're doing uh, refurb work and obviously for, for nailing nails in. This is what we call a club hammer or a lump hammer, both the same, varying weight. This particular one is, is, is a two and a half pound weight. If they're much bigger, it gives you too much strain on your arms. This tool is used in conjunction with a bolster chisel. So these two are used together to chop off plaster. But remember to wear an item of PPE, essential. Two examples of plasterous hawks. This is made of polypropylene, lightweight. This one's been designed for this size trowel, as you can see, and then to apply the plaster onto the wall. This is an aluminium hawk, made of aluminium. Again, this size trowel, this size hawk is made for this size trowel. But it doesn't really matter, you can use both. If you ever buy an aluminium hawk, always a good quality hawk, has lots of rivets around there and it stops the hawk from twisting in use. Two more plastering tools. This is a, a sponge face float. This is used for one coat plastering work where you apply the plaster to the background, rub it up with the float, or the aggregate comes to, to the face, and then you use your finishing trowel to trowel the aggregate back in and go over once more or twice with the sponge float. Again, polypropylene float come in various sizes. This one's a plain float for rubbing up external rendering or for floor screeding. Some floats have nails in or screws and the screws protrude by about one millimetre and we call that a devil float. Looking at some other tools now, this is a, a dry liner's pouch and there you would have your pad saw to cut round sockets, a craft knife, uh, a rasp, drop that sorry, and a, a measuring tape. Most plasters only need a tape of between three and five metres, more than sufficient. This is a pair of plasterous snips, and we use these snips to cut angle beads, stop beads, and various other types of metal trim 
used in plastering. Two types of plastering brush. This is a water brush which we use for traditional uh, two coat plastering or, or skimming. And this is called a uh, splash brush or a turk's head traditionally. This is used for fibrous plastering particularly. This is used for traditional plastering. Another aspect of plastering is fibrous work and these are only a few of the common tools used. This is a joint rule, a 6 inch joint rule, a 150, and this is a 100 mil a joint rule, and we use this to mitre into the corners when doing cornices. Just a pair of scissors, we use this to cut hessian, which is used to reinforce fibrous plastering, and then two types of small tools. This is a leaf tool, to so shape like a leaf. This is a spade end, so do two different types, but there are many more. This tool is called a, a wire scratcher, and when you apply your first coat of rendering, called scratch coat, you do some wavy lines across the rendering, and this provides a mechanical key for your second coat of rendering. This is another type of trowel, another aspect of plastering, called floor scraping. I'll let me show you the difference between the two trowels. If we look at a, a, a skimming trowel, the trowel is very flexible and much broader. If we look at a flooring trowel, the trowel is narrower but a lot stiffer and slightly longer. This allows you to do long sweeps across your floor screed as the work progresses. Simple panel saw, used for cutting timber lath, can be used for cutting plasterboard or other lath on job. Very useful tool. This is a, a plasterer's whisk, used for mixing all types of plaster. Remembering to use 110 for safe usage. Then from about £100 up to £400. Uh, this is called a, a spatula. And this is used in conjunction with the sponge float. You lay on your one coat plaster work and you go over with the spatula to bring it up to a fine surface and then trowel in the fine aggregates as the work proceeds. This is called a plasterous feather edge. This one is just under 1.8 metres. Notice the, the shape there. This is the feather edge. And we use this tool too to roll off the plaster. We turn it this way. And this is to feather off the plaster. Again, varying sizes from 1.2, 1.8, 2.4, made of alum aluminium. The two most common sizes of spirit level used by plasterers is the 600 or 2 foot and then the 1.8 metre length. So the 1.8 will be for doing. Uh, fixing angle beads around patio doors and corners whereas the smaller one can be used for doing soffits and window sills. When you ever use a level, a little tip is make sure the, the bubble's in the middle and then turn the level around the other way and if the bubble goes in the same position that will tell you that the level is true. If it doesn't, you need to uh, dispose of the level because it's no longer any use.